name is Dr. Philip K. I'm a GP, author, and a bowel cancer patient. I've written various books on topics ranging from fertility to the menopause, as well as publishing my own cancer diary that I had no intention of publishing at all, called Doctors Get Cancer Too. I wrote that to help myself, but hope that it might help other people. I am also on your television screens in programs like This Morning and The News, and I'm a mum of three young children, two in primary school, one in secondary. As part of my work as a GP, I see people all the time that have symptoms which could be related to bowel cancer. So change in bowel habit, we all have a bowel habit. You might go three times a week and someone else might go three times a day. It doesn't matter, both of those things are normal. It's about when your bowel habit changes. So maybe you become more constipated or have diarrhea or looser stools, but it has to persist for at least three weeks. Other symptoms of bowel cancer include having blood from your bottom. It might be bright red, might be mixed in with the poo, it might splash the bowl. You might have abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, unintentional fatigue, or you might find a lump. And I see patients with those kind of symptoms all the time. But just as if you develop a breast lump doesn't mean automatically that you have breast cancer, having one of those symptoms doesn't automatically mean that you have bowel cancer. But what it does mean is that you have a symptom that you need to get checked out at the GP. If someone comes to see me with some of those symptoms, the first thing that I would do is take their history. We might ask you about medication, we might ask you how long you've had the symptoms for, and then your doctor is likely to examine you, and that will involve feeling your tummy, and is also likely to involve a rectal examination. Your GP may then order some investigations, um, and depending on what your symptoms are, they may order some investigations straight away, or they may refer you to the two-week suspected cancer clinic. Again, it doesn't mean Mean automatically that you have cancer it means that you have symptoms that need to be checked out when you get there there are again various investigations which might take place including a colonoscopy which is when you take very strong laxatives to clean out the bowel and then a camera is put up the bottom you have some sedation generally and um, so that the surgeon can have a good look inside I'm often asked whether or not women need to be aware of anything in particular when it comes to symptoms of bowel cancer. And often women say, well, I'm always constipated, so how would I know? And the answer is, well, if you're not always constipated, then that's your normal bowel habit. But if that changes, if that perhaps becomes more severe, or if that suddenly gets better, then you need to get that checked out. When it comes to treatment for bowel cancer, the treatment will depend on the stage at which the bowel cancer was diagnosed. Now, bowel cancer is the fourth commonest cancer in the UK and actually its second biggest killer. But if it is picked up early, then it has extremely good survival rates. So we want to pick up bowel cancer, like all cancers, as early as possible because it's likely that then it will be easier to treat and that you will make a full recovery. Now, that treatment will depend on your particular cancer, what's found and the stage that it is found at. But options may include surgery, you might have uh, part of the bowel removed, you might need a stoma for a period of time, you might be offered chemotherapy and other treatments. And if the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, then you might be offered additional treatments as well. And all treatments unfortunately do have risks and potentially have side effects as well. And some of those may be different for women to men. For example, whether or not chemotherapy might have the possibility of inducing a premature menopause, or maybe there are issues with regards to fertility at the time. And I think that it's really important that you talk to your surgeon, your oncologist, your GP about what is important to you so that you can get holistic care that looks at all of you and not just the part that has cancer. My experience of bowel cancer, well, I was 39 when I was diagnosed with bowel cancer and unfortunately I didn't have any of the classic symptoms of bowel cancer 
cancer. I had had some abdominal pain since the birth of my last child, which everybody thought would be related to scar tissue. I'd had multiple cesarean sections, I'd had multiple other surgeries, but I didn't have any other symptoms at all. And when I went to see the doctor, I was referred to a gynecologist um, and the gynecologist thought that my womb might be stuck to my bowel because of scar tissue and because of that he said I think that we need to see a bowel surgeon as well and the bowel surgeon decided that we should do a scan and there was a tiny bit of shadowing on the scan. I was told afterwards at the multidisciplinary team meeting that the majority of the consultant radiologists said that they wouldn't have commented on the tiny bit of shadowing that they thought essentially was poo, but one of them did, and because of that, I was asked to have a colonoscopy. And I went into that colonoscopy, um, and literally as I went in, the surgeon said, I don't think we're going to find anything here, and we're going to do the surgery to remove your scar tissue. And they pushed the sedation in, and I remember lying back and glancing up at the screen and saw my cancer and I turned and I looked to the surgeon and his eyes came up and I knew. And in that moment, my entire world changed. And I was incredibly lucky to be found and I am hugely grateful that I was found. But that doesn't mean that treatment and being diagnosed with bowel cancer is easy, it's not. I had surgery to remove part of my colon followed by chemotherapy and then unfortunately further legions were found and I ended up having more surgeries including a big hospital stay in the middle of the pandemic um, when I had a two-week hospital to stay 10 days in ICU and thankfully now at the moment there is no evidence of disease but I do think that anybody who has undergone treatment in the pandemic and has had to do it on their own will say, I know that I say, and I know that lots of my patients, but as well lots of people that I meet that talk about cancer, that doing it on their own has made a hard situation even harder. So if you've been diagnosed with bowel cancer, the first thing to say is whatever you feel is valid and it is okay. And those feelings are huge and they are complex and they are complicated and they are often conflicting and that's all okay. So you can be angry and sad and brave and fed up and determined and grumpy and, and, and. It's not or, it's and. And you don't have to go into your treatment laughing and skipping and brimming with positivity like everybody says to you, be positive. No, you can say that it's rubbish. That's okay, but you go anyway. And for me, that's where the true strength is, is the fact that you can accept that it sucks, but you go anyway. I would recommend that you carry around a notepad and a pen into every hospital appointment. You write down all your questions, you write down what they say, because in that myriad of emotions you might not remember, take somebody with you if you can, find your people that you can talk to, um, and that might be therapy, it might be group, it might be loved ones, but keep, keep talking. Your body is undergoing treatment, but you also have to look after your mind. And my advice for somebody who knows someone with cancer, and the truth is, is that all of us will be touched by cancer at some point, because one in two of us are going to get cancer at some point in our lives, which means that all of us are going to know somebody at some point. So what do you do? And I think there are a number of things. The first is listen. And by listening, I literally mean that. Listen, acknowledge, to, acknowledge what the person is saying to you and don't try and fix it. Your job is not to fix it. And I understand that it is hard to hear us. It is hard to hear us when we hurt and you love us, so you want to make it better. But you can't always make everything better. And if you could sit with us when it's rubbish, and just listen and say, I hear you, I see it's hard and I'm here. I think that has a huge power to help us feel less alone. And the second thing is be really practical. So in today's social media WhatsApp times, it's really easy to drop a message 
and say, um, anything you need. I don't know what I need today. I don't know if I can get out of bed today. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get dressed today. I don't know. But if you say to me, I'm in the supermarket, I'm buying milk, I'm passing your door on the way home, let me drop some off for you. You've made 90% of those decisions for me and I don't feel that I'm putting you out. So I can say yes or no at that point without having to make a lot of decisions. So be practical and finally, remember who we were before cancer because we're still that person. And if we were interested in shoes or gossip or... I don't know, what's going on with your next door neighbour, we're still interested in that now. And what made us laugh before or whatever else, we still might find funny now. So remember that we were that person and we still want to be that person, even though some part of our lives has changed. So don't feel that you have to mollycoddle us or not talk to us about your lives. For many of us, we're desperate for that sense of normality.